today on Dustin to Win. We all have our ideas of the perfect man or woman, what they look like, how they act, what they like to do, and even how they dress. But the reality is that no relationship and no person will ever be perfect. In today's message, Pastor Frank will give you the ultimate list based on God's ultimate principles so that you can stop the dating scene and find the one you're meant for. Watch and see on Destined to Win. Hi, I'm Marcus Gill. Welcome to Destined to Win with Frank Santora. We want to take you into an amazing worship experience at our broadcast location in New Milford, Connecticut, so that you can be blessed by this word from the Lord. from which my assignment comes today, Ruth, chapter number two. Ruth, chapter number two, one of the greatest stories in all of the Bible, an appropriate story as we begin a new series called Perfect Relationships Are Anything But. Isn't that the truth? Anybody have any perfect relationships other than my wife? Right? Relationships are sloppy. Relationships are messy. Relationships are made up of people and people who are flawed and people who have shortcomings and are selfish and want things their own way. Relationships are anything but perfect. But the Bible does give us guidelines for relationships, and relationships are so important to our lives. And so Ruth chapter number 2, beginning in verse 1, the Scripture says, There was a relative of Naomi's husband, a man of great wealth, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. So Ruth the Moabitess said to Naomi, please let me go to the field and glean heads of grain after him in whose sight I might find favor. And she said to her, go my daughter. And then she left and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. Now behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, the Lord be with you. And they answered, The Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to the servant who is in charge of the reaper, Who's that fine young woman over there? 
So the servant who was in charge of the reapers answered and said, It is the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. And she said, Please let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and has continued from morning until now, though she rested a little while in the house. And while she rose up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and do not reproach her, and let grain from the bundles fall purposely for her. Leave it that she may glean, and do not rebuke her. Today, in honor of St. Valentine's Day, I want to minister to you from the original Romeo and Juliet story. And here it is, the story of Ruth and Boaz. And my subject today is what I'm calling romantic checklist. The romantic checklist. Don't look at me in that tone of voice like you don't have one. You know you all got a romantic checklist. If you're married, you got a romantic checklist. If you're single, I know you got a romantic checklist. Ladies, you got a romantic checklist out there. Tall, dark, handsome. 44, chest, 34, waist, smart, fun-loving, a planner yet knows how to wing it a little bit, educated, good job, family guy. Guys, you know you got a list, 36, 26, 36. That's the end of the guy list, right? I mean, the guy list is short, you know, because we're just so shallow and narrow-minded and everything like that. But there is biblical instruction for the right kind of romantic checklist. And i got to be honest with you, it's hard to find a good biblical relationship. One that kind of stands up, if you will, to the principles of the Word of God. And I, I searched all through the Bible, and I thought, which can be the example I can use for, for the right kind of romantic relationship? And I, I started off thinking David and Bathsheba. No, that ain't going to work. Then I, then I went to Samson and Delilah. That ain't going to work either. You can't even go to Abraham and Sarah. Abraham kicked it with his wife's handmaid and had an illegitimate child on the side and then lied and said she was his sister, so you can't go there. Jacob, you you can't even go to Jacob. He wanted to marry Rachel, wind up marrying his sister Leah, and then married Rachel afterward. First version of sister wives ever in existence. You go to Solomon. Solomon had 700 wives and cock concubines. It kind of just threatens that he was really the wisest man that ever lived. Come on, somebody. But I found one. This is the story of, of Ruth and Boaz and Ruth and Boaz kind of cuts through the the messy, imperfect relationships that so many of us are a part of and teaches us how to have a right and godly relationship and gives us some clues of what should be on our romantic checklist. The story of Ruth and Boaz doesn't begin all that well. Matter of fact, it begins as broken and as bitter as life can get. Life doesn't always go the way that we planned and for Ruth and Boaz, life didn't start off so great, at least for Ruth and her mother-in-law, Naomi. Ruth is the daughter-in-law of Naomi, who is, as I said, her her mother-in-law. She was married to a man by the name of Elimelech, and she had two sons, Malian and Chilean. I call them Max and Chuck because who calls people Malian and Chilean these days? Anyway, and uh, they married her two daughter-in-laws, Ruth and Orpah, they decided that since there was a famine in the land where they were living, they were going to leave the town that they were uh, living in, which was Bethlehem, and they were going to go to a foreign land um, to kind of uh, wait out the famine and go to a place where where things weren't that bad. And they planned to only go for a short time and then to come back home. But they wound up staying there for 10 years. And during their 10-year trek to what they thought was going to be a reprieve from some hard times, they fell on even harder times. Matter of fact, all three of the men in Naomi's life passed away. Elimelech passed away, and our two sons, Max and Chuck, passed away. And in Bible times, in any time, this is really a big deal, right? But in Bible times, it was even a bigger deal because women then were totally dependent upon the men in their lives in order to be sustained financially and taken care of. And first, it would be the husband, and then if the husband passed away, it was the responsibility of the sons to take care of their mother uh, in in this case. And so, um, she has nobody left, and so life starts off really, really bitter. But here's what we need to understand when life is bitter. It's only part of the story. 
And, and sometimes parts of the story are just not good. Sometimes parts of the story hurt. Sometimes parts of the story are, are tragic. But what we need to always understand is it's not the whole story, that, that God is truly the author and the finisher of our faith, and that God has a way of taking either the, even the bitter moments of our life and turning them around and bringing good things out of them. And so don't pause in the part of your story that is bitter. Don't get hung up in the part that is low. Stay faithful and trust God that he can bring about good even out of the bitter circumstances of life. And really one of the themes of the story of Ruth and Boaz is exactly that, that when life starts off bitter, that that doesn't mean it has to stay bitter, but that it can get better. And so um, you know the way the story progresses. It's a famous story. Um, when all of the men pass away, Naomi feels for her daughter-in-laws, and she wants to make sure that they're taken care of. And so she basically looks at them both, and she says, listen, you need to go back to where you came from. You need to go back to your hometowns. You need to go back to your family. You need to find yourself some new husbands. I don't have any more children that I can give you. Even if I were to bear children now, would you wait for them to grow up in order to marry them and go back home? And, and you remember the famous part of the conversation. It goes like this, um, verse number 14. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, look, your sister-in-law has gone back to our people and to our gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. Your God, my God, where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. And the Lord do to me, and more also, if anything but death parts you and me. And in this famous statement, we find the first key to our romantic checklist, the first point on the checklist, if you will. And it's number one on your outline, be spirit-led. I want you to notice that Orpah chose to leave and Ruth chose to cleave. One chose to exit Naomi's life. The other chose to stay in Naomi's life. Ro Ruth chose to stay because she sensed in her spirit that this relationship with Naomi, her mother-in-law, was a destiny relationship. She sensed that this godly relationship was something that her destiny was wrapped up in. She didn't know why she should stay. It didn't make sense because it would have been better for her to go and find a husband. But in her spirit, she knew this is a destiny relationship. She didn't know how life would unfold, but she just felt she had to stay with it. She didn't know how this godly relationship would lead to her destiny, but something told her on the inside, don't leave like Orpah, stay by your mother-in-law's side. And there are all sorts of destiny relationships throughout the Bible. Elisha knew that his destiny was tied to Elijah. And so you remember he left his plows, he left his farming, and he, he went after Elijah to be a servant to Elijah. I mean, he gave up everything just to serve this man because there was a destiny that was tied in it. Timothy knew that his destiny was tied to the apostle Paul, and Joshua knew that his destiny was tied to being Moses' minister, and the disciples knew that their destiny was tied to following Jesus, and Jonathan and David knew that their destiny was tied tied together. There are certain relationships in our lives that are destiny relationships. And Ruth knew that this was a destiny relationship. And so she said, wherever you go, I'm going. Where you live, I'll live. Your God will be my God. I will stick by you until the very end. She didn't know why, but she just knew. And the question is, how did she know? By the Spirit of God. Sometimes we just forget that when it comes to relationships, one of the key ways to judge whether a relationship is something that you should leave or that's something you should cleave to, is what is the Spirit of God saying on the inside of you? What's going on deep down on the inside? Because here's what I found about, it, about the Spirit of God. He's not going to uh, persuade you to go in the wrong direction. He's not going to tell you to stay in a relationship that you ought to exit. He's not going to tell you to, to, to cleave to a relationship, you know, that is not right for you. The Spirit of God is going to lead you down the right path. And as Christians, we seem to forget that the Holy Spirit should be our first checkpoint. 
you know, we, we check with friends, you know, we, we, we check with our mind, and, you know, we check with, with our wants, we check with our flesh. How about checking in with the Spirit of God? How about getting quiet for just a moment and just listening down in here to what the Spirit of God says? The Scripture says that the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. That means we're led by the inner witness. Is there peace on the inside of you about a particular relationship? Or is there unrest on the inside of you about a particular relationship? Is there peace about a particular decision? Is there unrest about a particular decision? You've got to follow the Spirit of God. I can tell you that I wish I always listened to the Spirit of God. because, But we all know that many times we, we push the voice of the Holy Spirit down, right? We, we kind of put Him in a box. We turn our back on Him. We pretend like He's not talking. We override Him. And, and we do have free choice. We can override the Spirit of God. But the Spirit of God wants to lead us into the right relationships. And so you got to know when to stay with a relationship, and you've got to know when to leave a relationship. And the Holy Spirit will tell you both. And in this famous part of the story, we find those two choices. We find one person stayed and the other person left. Notice what they did when Orpah chose to leave. They kissed her goodbye. It's one of my favorite principles in the Word of God. you got to know when to kiss certain people goodbye. Sometimes you don't kiss them goodbye. Sometimes you kick them goodbye. But then you got to know when to let certain people exit your life, right? And the worst thing that you could do when somebody wants to leave your life is try to convince them to stay in your life. You know how many people have messed up because, you know, somebody left and they were, their emotions were hurt and their feelings were hurt? If you got to convince somebody to stay in your life, that is not the right relationship. If they can walk, that means that their part of the story is over. Your destiny is no longer attached to them, and God has got something better for you. And so you need to learn, as I like to say, how to have the gift of goodbye. It is a spiritual gift. Pastor, I feel like God is leading me to another church. Bye. I'm not going to try to convince. I mean, you think I'm going to sit down, try to convince you to stay, try to convince you of why this is a good place. If you've been exposed to this place and don't know why it's a good place, bye. See you down the road. I don't mean that mean. If somebody comes along to you and somebody says, it's not you, it's me. Bye. See you down the road. You're not meeting my needs. Bye. See you down the road. See, we need to get confident in the destiny that God has for us. We need to get confident in the relationships that God has for us. And we need to develop that all-important spiritual gift on when to move on from people. Matter of fact, listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, whoever will not receive or hear your words, when you depart from that house, shake off the dust from your feet. Somebody rejects you, here's what Jesus said. I'll try to convince them to accept you. Do you know that there are two kinds of ways people come into your life? One is God sends them. One is the devil sends them. And they both send them for the same person because one wants to see your destiny fulfilled. The other one wants to see your destiny aborted. And the primary vehicle that they use in order to get our destiny to the place where it comes to pass versus see our destiny aborted is people who come into our lives. Because whether we like to believe it or not, our destiny is always tied to key relationships. I told my staff the other day, I said, we have reached a place in the life of this ministry where the ministry's success is no longer dependent upon my ability. And so we need to realize that our destiny is tied to relationships. We need to be spiritual spirit-led when it comes to relationships. Can I tell you a little bit of my story, and some of you know it a little bit, but I was headed down the wrong road with relationships. I was in a bad relationship. I started the relationship, then I got saved, and when, as soon as I got saved, God called me into ministry, and the first thing that God put in my spirit, he said, you know you need to, re, uh, to, to, to get out of this relationship. And I fought him for four years. For four years, God said, you know you need to get out of this relationship. You know you need to get out of this relationship. You know you need to get out of this relationship. And so long as I was in that relationship, my destiny kept going further and further away from my calling. And I began to pursue all other career paths and so on and so forth, but I had an experience with God. Thank God for experiences with God, right? You can, you can read the Bible, and I think you should. Matter of fact, I think the more you read the Bible, the more experiences with God you'll get. But you need to have those experiences with God where God makes himself real to you. And I had an experience with God, and God said, it's time to kiss Orpah goodbye. 
You need to get rid of this relationship. And as soon as I got rid of that relationship, I waited about a year just, just searching for the right person. You know, I had my list, 36, 26, 36. And, and I was just searching for the right person. And about a year later, the right person came into my life. My wife, Lisa, she is a destiny relationship. So much so that I would not be pastoring this church today if I had never kissed Orpa goodbye and allowed God to bring me the Ruth that he had for me. I would not be here in every way. Matter of fact, it was her dad that was relocated to Connecticut. That's why we made our way up here. And without that relationship, we would have never made our way up here. If we never made our way up here, I would have never pastored this church. Had I not pastored this church, we wouldn't be here today. Maybe it would be here. I don't know. But chances are it probably wouldn't. We wouldn't have a campus here in New Milford. We wouldn't have a campus in New York City. We wouldn't be starting a campus in Waterbury. We wouldn't be starting a campus in Atlanta. We wouldn't have a TV ministry. We wouldn't be touching the world. All because of one relationship choice, one relationship choice can change the trajectory of your life forever. Be spirit-led. Second thing on your romantic checklist, some of you are hoping for, you know, a, like a different kind of romantic checklist, you know. Some of you guys were looking for some tips for how to set up Valentine's Day. We're not going to get into that this week, maybe next week, but, but second thing on the romantic checklist is you need to stay faithful. It was hard for Naomi and Ruth to make it in their society. Their only means of supporting themselves was for Ruth to go out in the field and pick up the scraps of wheat that were left behind. It was hard. It, it didn't provide a, a lot for them. It just provided what they needed. But you know what Ruth did? Ruth stayed faithful. She kept doing it day after day after day. And I got to thinking about this, and, and, and I, I got to thinking about Ruth. And I'm going to modernize the story a little bit. Ruth could have, instead of going to the field, she could have went to the club. Instead of going to the field, she could have put out. Instead of going to the field, she could have been real easy so that she would have gotten a man, so that she could have been stopped from going out in the field and doing all the hard work and just have somebody else take care of her. But you know what Ruth did? Ruth wouldn't compromise. Ruth stayed faithful, even under difficult times, even though she had lost her husband, even though she was barely making ends meet. And here's the principle. When you stay faithful, eventually you'll walk into God's favor. When you stay faithful, even in the challenging times of life, eventually you will walk into God's favor. You remember what Boaz did? It says, when she left, Ruth left, and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers, it just so happened, she just so happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who is of the family of Elimelech. I love the phrase, she happened to come. She, she just so happened to choose that part of the field. Of all the parts of the field that she could have chose, she chose the part of the field that belonged to Boaz. Can I tell you that if you are a child of God, nothing just happens. If you are a child of God, God sees every injustice. If you're a child of God, he sees every bad break. If you're a child of God, he sees every heartache. If you're a child of God, he sees every tough time. He hears all your cries. He bottles all your tears. He keeps a record of them. And when you stay faithful, you know what God does as you're going through all of those difficult times where you're choosing to stay faithful? God begins to line stuff up so that it just so happens. It just so happened that Boaz visited that field at the precise time that, that uh, Ruth was there. It just so happened that of all the people that were gleaning after the reapers, that Ruth caught the eye of Boaz. It just so happened. If you believe that, i got a bridge to sell you. Nothing just happens. If you are a child of God, it happens because the steps of a good woman or a good man are ordered of the Lord. It just, it happens because instead of compromise, Ruth remained faithful and walked into the favor of God. It happened because instead of cheapening herself, she trusted in God. And because she stayed faithful, look at the next part of the story. When she rose up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men saying, let her glean even among the sheaves. And do not reproach. In other words, don't let her get no leftovers. Let her come in where you all are getting the good stuff. And let the grain from the bundles fall purposely for her. In other words, let's make this easier for her. 
Let's, let, instead of letting her get the scraps, let's bundle some stuff up and let's just drop it in our path so that as she's got her head down, because that's what faithfulness is, right? Faithfulness is when you just put your head down and say, I'm going forward for the cause of Christ. And so as she's got her head down and she's picking up scraps, all of a sudden, boop, she just stumbles into a bundle of blessings. See, that's what faithfulness will do for you. Faithfulness will cause you to go into the favor of God where life will come a little bit easier easier than if you try to do it all in your own strength. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. As we learned, there is a roadmap for finding that special someone. Everybody's journey is different, but yours should always include prayer, following the Holy Spirit, and checking out the fruit. Don't ignore the fruit in somebody else's life. It tells the entire story. My announcer is going to come in just a minute and share with you how you can get today's offer, and then I'll be right back. When you pray for help with your finances, health, marriage, even your relationship with your children, do you feel like you become consumed with waiting, waiting for solutions, waiting for your healing, waiting for a miracle? With all of that time spent waiting, when what you desperately need is answers, you become paralyzed, unable to ever believe your breakthrough is coming. But Pastor Frank Santora wants you to know that the answers to your prayers are closer than you realize. In his brand new free ebook, 30 Minutes to Pizza, Praying to Get Results, Pastor Frank will walk you through his fresh revelation on prayer so you can always be assured that no matter what you ask, you will receive it. In 30 Minutes to Pizza, Pastor Frank will also help you discover the type of faith you need to build your confidence that God will deliver the life-changing and time answers you need in life. Get your copy of 30 Minutes to Pizza absolutely free by visiting faithchurch.cc and clicking on ebook and request your free copy today. Thanks for tuning in to part one of the Romantic Checklist. Be sure to join me next week to see if there's anything else you need to check off on your list. If you're in the Atlanta, New York, or Connecticut areas, we would love for you to join us for a service at Faith Church. For more information on service times and locations, go to faithchurch.cc. Until next time, remember these words. With Jesus, you are destined to win. Join us at church this weekend. Faith Church is a place you'll experience relevant and dynamic teaching for the whole family, including teenagers, kids, and the little ones. Stop by one of our locations in New York City, Atlanta, or Western Connecticut and learn what Jesus, you are, destined to win. For service times and locations, go to our website, www.faithchurch.cc. Check out this clip of a recent message from Pastor Frank. He says, so that you would know that the Son of Man has power to forgive sins. He turned and he said, son, take up your mat, arise, and go home. See, that mat right there is a reminder to me that he's my healer. And he could be your healer, because he's my healer from cancer. He's my healer from a broken heart. He's my healer from a wayward child. He's my healer from the divorce that I've just been through. He's my healer from the job I've just been laid off from. He's my healer. He's my healer. He's my healer. We invite you to visit us at one of our locations. Or join us online every Sunday at faithchurch.cc slash live. On behalf of Pastor Frank and from all of us at Faith Church, God bless you, we love you, and we'll see you next week.